Today we're going to talk a little bit more about counter space because this seems to be the hardest concept for uh, for people to understand or for people to uh, grasp in regard to this new way of thinking about uh, magnetism and incommensurability. Okay, so Ken Wheeler talks about can counter space. Eric Dollard also talks about counter space, and uh, I, probably that's where Ken Wheeler got that term from. So um, we're going to have a look at a few little sections from this uh, text called A Common Language for Electrical Engineering by Eric Dollard. Now, Eric Dollard feels that there should be another language, that the current language is, is not very good, and I happen to agree the current language of standard physics, mainstream physics, is not very good. It is like a really super bad computer program that needs to be rewritten. And so that's what I want to do. I want to rewrite the program. I want to redefine the language. And um, I feel that counter space really adds something to the language or, you know, is an important part of the language. And so we're going to talk about that. So, uh, Let's uh, review a couple of sections from this document, okay? So he calls them transmissions rather than chapters, okay? So transmission one, energy defined in terms of electrical engineering. So here is what he says. Energy in its most archetypal form is embodied in the phenomenon of electricity. But what is electricity? Now our wheels are even more stuck in the mud. We have important clues, namely that of polarity, not plus or minus so much as like male and female. So what he's talking about here is the principle of incommensurability. Male and female are incommensurate principles. Male is not female and female is not male. Okay, so this thought follows from uh, Goss to Tesla, to Steinmetz. Thus, electricity, in order to manifest, a union must develop, okay? So that's an important part of the principle of incommensurability is you have two incommensurate principles, male and female, plus or minus charge, whatever you want to call it, but there is a union between the two. There is a conjugate nature between male and female, and without that conjugate nature, human life would not exist on this planet. Without conjugation, human life would not propagate on this planet. Okay, so this is a really great uh, way of looking at it. This is the union of male, the male or projective, multiplied by the female or receptive. Okay, male projects obviously, and female receives. Hereby, the male is the dielectric field in counter space of per centimeter, which is just the, the units that they used at the time, and the magnetic field, or female, in space of centimeters squared. So there's a spatial dimension involved in magnetism. Space in centimeters squared is what you pay for in real estate, obviously. Counter space in per centimeter is the space between the lines on the ruler or between the molecules in the crystal or between um, other things, between things, the space between things. So that's really interesting. That that really triggered something when I read that the first time, that counter space is the space between the lines on the ruler. Okay, and we'll get back to that in a second. For the electricity extent, extended between a pair of wires in your lamp cord, the closer the wires, the more capacitance, and thus the more dielectricity. Conversely, for the same cord, we're talking about two wires together, the further apart the wires, the more inductance and thus the more magnetism. Therefore it is seen that the smaller the space, 
the more the counter space, the more dielectricity can be stored. And conversely, the larger the space between the wires, the more real estate there is, the more magnetism that can be stored. And then he says, this is very simple. Do not let your mind make it more complicated than that. So counter space in a way kind of simplifies things because you've got the dielectric component, which is counter spatial and the magnetic component, which is spatial. And they both represent stored energy. So this is from transmission two from that paper. In the previous transmission, it was shown that the electric induction bound between the wires of the lamp cord was the union of two distinct fields of induction, the dielectric in counter space and the magnetic in space. These two fields consist of discrete lines of force. Thus, these lines exist as individual units or quanta of inductive force. Both fields exert mechanical force upon the bounding system of the so-called conductors. These mechanical forces, those of the dielectric and those of the magnetic, exert actions so as to increase their coefficients of induction, that is the dielectric capacitance, and the magnetic induction are increased. Okay, let me read that again. These mechanical forces, those of the dielectric and those of the magnetic, exert actions so as to increase their coefficients. So basically the two work together to create a balance between the two. Hereby, the dielectric field draws the conductors near to each other increasing counter space. So instead of saying decreasing the space, we're saying it increases counter space. Conversely, the magnetic field pushes the conductors away from each other, increasing space. Hereby, we may say that the dielectric field is contractive and the magnetic field is expansive. Hence, the resulting electric field of the union produces a resultant force upon the bounding conductors, the two conductors. This resultant force thus may be expansive, null, or contractive, depending upon the relative densities of the dielectric and the magnetic fields, respectively. Okay, so there's the commensurability, the magnetic causes expansion, the dielectric causes contraction or shortens the space, creates more counter space between the wires. And that is why he uses the term or how he uses the term counter space. Okay, so just one more little thing here and then, uh, then we'll uh, get on to something really interesting. So far, I think the concept of space and counter space in its basic form is established. Counter space, as that space between the lines on the ruler, is an apt descriptive analog. Okay, a ruler divided in millimeters has less counter space than a ruler divided in nanometers. Or a ruler divided in inches has less counter space than a ruler divided in centimeters or millimeters. Now, this makes no sense in Cartesian three-dimensional space. What he just said here makes absolutely no sense, okay? How can a ruler divided in inches have less counter space than the ruler divided in millimeters? Yeah, okay, so the millimeters have more ticks in the ruler than the inches. But how does that create counter space? Okay, in Cartesian, in Cartesian um, geometry, Euclidean Cartesian geometry, this makes no sense. And I think this is why people are having a really hard time understanding 
the counter space. Okay. But in comes my friend here, the Mendelbrot set, the fractal. The fractal solves the problem. Without the fractal paradigm, without a fractal universe, without the fractal, the concept of the fractal, what he said here makes no sense. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at my program here. Okay, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in to this fractal. We'll just spend a little time zooming here. So what is going on here? What is going on here? When I zoom into a fractal, this fractal, okay, in order to zoom into the fractal, what I need to do is I need to, I need to put more ticks on my ruler. Basically what I am doing as I zoom in to the fractal is I am creating counter space. I am shrinking the measuring stick. I am adding more ticks to the ruler so that I can see, I can resolve more information. And that is what's going on here. Now, if I go backwards, you'll see everything looks like it's getting smaller because I am decreasing the counter space. I am removing ticks from my ruler and the image is shrinking. Okay. And then eventually we will shrink right back out to where we were before. So it's my opinion that without the fractal paradigm, the concept of counter space makes no sense. And that is why I believe people are having a hard time understanding counter space. Now to zoom into the fractal, you, you have to in order to be able to zoom into the fractal, you need to um, you need to add more ticks to the ruler. You're basically putting more ticks on the ruler so that you can see in between in between the ticks. And the further I zoom in, the higher resolution, the smaller the pixels are. So basically I'm shrinking the pixels. The pixels are shrinking as I zoom in to the fractal. Let's start over. The measuring stick is continuously shrinking as I zoom in to the fractal. And the effect of this is basically it looks like everything is expanding. When you shrink the measuring stick, and here's the, here's the tricky part, or here's the revelation that I had, that when you create counter space, you also create space. So when you create counter space, you also create space. So I want you to imagine, as I zoom into this fractal, let's start over again. As I zoom into the fractal, I want you to imagine what it would look like if you could turn around and look the other way. If you could turn around and look the other way, it's going to look like the universe is expanding. When you create counter space, you're creating space. And in this sense, the universe can, can be completely contained. The universe can be completely con contained. The universe is not expanding. The universe only looks like it's expanding because the measuring stick is, is shrinking because the, the ticks between the line or between the ruler lines on the ruler are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I zoom in. And so this is, I believe, the reason why we think our universe is expanding. We look out into space and we see a phenomenon that we think is the universe expanding. Not only that, but the universe is accelerating in expansion. And that's exactly what it would look like if, a, if we were living in a fractal universe and counter space was being created on the fly. It would look like space is expanding. 
Kind of like in Alice in Wonderland when she took the pill that made her shrink. Okay, when Alice in Wonderland took the pill and, and that made her shrink, from her perspective, it looked like everything else was growing. It looked like everything else was getting bigger. It looked like everything else was expanding. So regarding the fractal expansion of the universe, I want to point you to a paper that was written by a gentleman named Blair McDonald. Okay, it's called Fractal Geometry, a Possible Explanation to the Accelerating Expansion of the Universe and Other Standard ADCM Anomalies. So in this paper, he shows how um, how the fractal, how zooming into a fractal is equivalent to the expanding universe. Okay, so let's just read a little bit of this. One of the great questions in modern cosmology today is what is causing the accelerating expansion of the universe, the so-called dark energy. It has been recently discovered uh, this property of accelerated expansion is not unique to the universe, but it's also evident with tree and plant growth. As trees are fractals, do fractals offer an explanation and insight to the accelerating expansion property of the universe? So an experiment was undertaken on the classical um, coach snowflake fractal. The snowflake was inverted to model observations from within an iterating fractal set as if it, it sort as if at static measured position. So basically it's, he's placing you on the fractal and he's allowing the fractal to grow. Unlike with the fractal snowflake formation, new triangle sizes were held constant, allowing earlier triangles in the set to expand as the set is iterated. And so that's kind of equivalent to what I was trying to get you to do with my animation, just sort of turn around and look to see as you zoom in, behind you, everything is zooming out and expanding. Okay, so using classical kinematic equations, velocities and accelerations were calculated for both the area and the, um, of the total fractal and the distance between points within the fractal set. Okay, the inverted fractal was also tested for the Hubble's law. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. I just wanted to show it to you because some people are work, you know, other people are working on this, and um, this is a very very interesting paper. If if you uh, want to see how he um, explains the expansion of the universe based on a, uh, the fractal paradigm, which I think is really great. And so um, that is all I really wanted to say about counter space. Let's do this one more time. Okay, what I'm doing here is I am creating counter space. In order to zoom into the fractal, I am creating counter space according to Eric Dollard's definition of counter space. And that's about it.